I'm the Magpie, and welcome to my very official video for the starter phone version 2. So the starter phone version 2, just like the starter phone version 1, is a kill switch with a fuss. But the starter phone version 2 is also a looper. But it's not a looper of the, the audio, that is a looper of the silence. I so in this video, we're gonna start with going through all of the controls, and then I'm gonna play more sounds through it to sort of explore what it can do. But then I also want to show you how it works, maybe. But there is a link in the description to magpiepedals.com where you can pick up one of these for yourself, if you feel like. Well, yeah, we are now, however, going to jump into showing you the controls. And to help me be super efficient with doing that, I'm gonna have this arpeggiator being played instead of playing guitar. And then I'm gonna cut to playing guitar, don't worry. So when first plugging in the starter phone, it works just as the version one. You start it up, and you can kill the signal with the big red button, or with the rotary dial. And that is the starter phone in its essence. The USP being that the kill switch is this lovely big red button from an old vintage rotary phone. In version one, I also included a fuzz, and that fuzz is also in here. But what's new for the version two is this knob right here, that is a, it is a mix knob, so you have a clean mix. We can introduce some fuzz. And then we have a fuzz knob and a volume knob. And the fuzz knob simply s s goes between two different fuzzes. So a sharper one to the right and a thicker one to the left. What is also new for the version 2 is the way that I am killing the signal. So in the version 1 I was simply mechanically cutting the signal whenever you press this one through the original phone mechanics on the inside. I cut the signal, but that can introduce a click sound whenever the sound latches back on. You might have noticed that in a DAW or whatever if you simply cut a piece of audio. So uh, now, instead, I developed an electronic silencer uh, that makes it so you don't get that click sound. However, if you start introducing a lot of fuss and stuff, especially if we don't play anything, You can still hear a bit of a sound. A lot of full transparency over here. Uh, <laughs> speaking of transparency, we also have this clear knob right here that also acts as an LED to indicate whenever the signal is cut. So whenever it's silent, this one lights up, which is very convenient. But the pod is not used for anything in the red mode, which is the original stutter phone mode. Back here, we also have a button this is an inverter switch. So now, instead of cutting the signal whenever you press the button, you get audio whenever you press the button. Or do the rotary. And that's all thanks to Accurate Beats, actually. So shout out to Accurate Beats, because he suggested that that was a good idea to do with the starter phone. And I agree. Let's move on to the, what's really cool with the starter phone version 2. If you simply hold in the bypass button for like a second or two seconds, you enter green mode. And green mode is a loop mode. So now this clear part over here sets the length of the loop. And it's being indicated by this LED blinking orange. So whenever it blinks orange, it resets the loop or like it starts over. So as you can see, it can go very fast. And it can also be up towards quite long, which is fun to do. So what happens in loop mode is that you record button presses with the big red button. You don't do anything with the rotary disc yet. We implemented a completely different function for that, which is also... Oh yeah, you input silences with the big red button. So you can input up to 10 inputs of silence. And they can vary in length, but they cannot be too long, because if you hold it for a couple of seconds, that's how you erase your previous inputs. 
But you can input 10, and then after that, they're gonna start to delete each other because of memory, and it can get really wonky pretty quickly, which is really, really fun. And also, when you have recorded, if you then, like, start making the loop shorter or longer, you're, like, scrolling within that space where you input that, so... That's kind of cool, I guess. And simply based on how good our human brains are at starting to recognize patterns, uh, it becomes safe in a sense, even though it's it's so human and, and random with just based on what you put in. However, to top it all off, what we did is we of course made it syncable. So if you have one of these, which is just a 5 volt clock source, like a gate clock, I am now going to sync it to the tempo of the arpeggiator. And then you can just see here that it's now blinking in, in tempo. And right away, the tempo of whatever loop you put in, however, however random it is, what you do, it's gonna start to feel like it's a glitchy rhythm that is just part of what's going on when you start thinking. And this is where we really went the extra mile with the rotary, because what the rotary does is that based on the numbers, it's gonna count the inputs from the clock, and it's gonna skip as many as the number that you put in. So if I input two, it's now gonna count two of the inputs to skip, and then it's gonna start over the loop. So in a sense, you are dividing, or whatever. You're just skipping steps. And then simply by going zero, we're back to just counting all of them. And then, <laughs> I mean, of course you can invert it in green mode as well. Did a bit of a drum groove, because it's synced. Since it is glitchy in a sense, whenever you are using the silence looper, uh, that is where the, sh the the fuzz effect really, really shines because then it becomes this gritty, glitchy vibe and uh, more so even with, with guitar, but I mean, I'm not against the idea of using fuzz for synth sounds. with as primitive of a sequencer that I put in there right now, it's really fun actually to play around with already. But let's cut to um, me making guitar sounds with it. And then I also want to cut after that to Bassmaster Andreas playing some guitar and bass through it because he visited a couple of days ago and I had him for the first time try all of the Magpie pedals pedals. So, um, and that was just his, his very first experience with it. So let's see how uh, that sounds. Because I think that can be like a, I don't know, f fun thing. <laughs>
table. So I want to end these videos with uh, showing you a bit of an inside look and talk a little bit about that because it's fun and hopefully inspiring. Me and Analog Weapon. Analog Weapon being the co-host of the Almost Viral podcast and also my dear friend who has helped me with developing all of the Magpie Pedals second editions. Like many of the updates are all thanks to Analog Weapon. So enormous shout out. We intend to more in a conversational format go through everything that has to do with the inside and you know you're just doing podcast episodes in regards to all the, the different projects that we are undertaking so if you want to check that out there's a link in the description and those episodes will start to roll out soon enough but i want to touch on some aspects of the inside in this video as well first of all as you can see it's kind of a spaghetti mess of wires i use molex connectors to alleviate that pain for me and i'm gonna try to all the foam parts that you can see here they, they look really cool on the inside yeah stuff going on the cogs that are spinning and the button coming up but yeah, all that's going on with the phone parts now, and that's where I traditionally were to cut the signal. All of that is now connected to a microcontroller with some code in it. And that code is what's doing all the, the looper shenanigans and, and all of the smart stuff. But it's also taking care of the bypass. So as you can see here, we have a relay. This blue part is a relay switch. And when the power is off, it's naturally closed or whatever so the signal just passes from jack from leg to leg on that one and then to the next jack through the the wires here but as soon as we feed it power from the microcontroller that one can go shwicky, 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 shwicky. it's got a lovely click sound that we cannot really demonstrate with this one but i'm going to demonstrate it with other pedals that has the triple bypass Anyways, when doing that, you have to do stuff in order to get rid of the, the click sound when the signal goes, <laughs> like latches on uh, within the relay, which is just like with a mechanical foot switch, you know? So after having done a bunch of research on that and read through th forum posts on how people generally do it, I instead opted to actually develop my own uh, with just a MOSFET transistor and a capacitor because on a breadboard that's how I got the, the best results in my opinion. And after having done that, because that's something that I then implement in all the different Magpie pedals pedals, uh, because they all utilize a relay switch for the bypass system. Uh, after having done that, it was such a natural conclusion to just use that as the effect for the stutter phone. So just utilizing the same silencer because that all happens at the very end. So right before this, this output wire, I should say. So anything can happen before that happens because it would just pull down the signal to silence with a bit of softness and latency. Oh, blah, 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 stuff. So all the fuss and all of that is going on before that in the signal chain. And it's sort of just, yeah played out quite naturally which was really 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 nice as you can also see the pcb has this quite funky shape where it goes from here and then it also actually goes underneath the foot switch like it was a it was interesting trying to fit everything that needs to be fitted in the solder foam with all of the all the stuff that is going on on a pcb uh, so i'm i'm intending to do like a build video also, where I simply record, you know, putting in all of the components in a PCB, and then drilling the box and stuff like that. So that's coming up soon, where you can maybe get even more of an understanding of <laughs> the effort of <laughs> building stuff. But yeah, you can already see some of my design choices in regards to the PCB. Like I choose to put as many resistors as possible in a row to make it really easy when I build it and then you know, separate out the different things on the PCB to sort of get a layout that is natural for me when I build it because that's essentially, as long as it doesn't affect the audio, that's, that's smart for me to do. And then I just mark out for every resistor it says on the PCB what value I am to put down. So I don't have to work with papers or anything like that. I'm just building it straight out of 
looking at the PCB and just fitting the Lego pieces. So that's just something I wanted to have said because maybe if you are planning to make your own PCBs, I believe that's a smart way to go about it when you are the one yourself putting it together. Anyways, thank you for watching this video and extra huge thank you if you uh, pick one of these up for yourself. I hope it can inspire you to make great silences, <laughs> Cre creative silences. And I will simply see you in the next episode or podcast or uh, online or in real life. Who's to say? Maybe you know me. Bye.